What's up, guys and girls? It's Zach from Switch Force. I've got Jake to my left, Gabe to my right. E3 is done. Yes. We've had a little rest, a good night's sleep, some food, and now we're ready to tackle your E3 2017 questions. We Thank you for sending them all in. We did eat and sleep during E3, though, as well. You make it sound like we were just fast, <laughs> no. starving, <laughs> sleepless the entire week. 72 hours of extreme <laughs> chaos and no... We uh, slept in caves. No, yeah. Uh, underpasses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we ate our Switch Joy-Con. Nope, yeah. That's there, why there. there's only a couple uh -huh. left. We ate the rest. Yes. Those neon yellows are the best. Yeah, they tasted like, like bananas. Yeah, banana starburst, bananas. which are the worst. Mm -hmm. Not a fan of those, but a fan of E3. It was a great show, and we want to get to some of your questions. So we're going to start it off with a question from Seuss, 3355, who says, Why isn't Dragon Ball Fighters and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite coming out for the Switch? This is a great question. I've been having a ton of fun with ARMS. I love ARMS so much. I made a statement earlier that was a little bit bonkers, but I said I like ARMS better than Mario Kart. Like, because Mario Kart, I've played ARMS is like a whole, like a wholly brand new thing, and I love fighting games. And the two biggest ones left in the year well, are not coming to Switch. So, do we think that it was that they couldn't get like the companies to bring it over to Switch, or like maybe they didn't even want them since they have ARMS and Pokémon coming out? They That's just want they want to clear space and let their franchises shine. I mean, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was announced quite a while ago, so I feel like that one gets a little bit of a pass. It's a fantastic game. I had a chance to play quite a bit of it at E3. It would be awesome on Switch. Dragon Ball Fighters, I'm surprised that's not. And maybe it gets a later announcement. It's early 2018, so there's still time. Maybe it does come at some point. But yeah, right now, neither are coming. Wish they were, um, but yeah, I, no, no updates. One thing quickly though, what I, what I don't want is for them to come to Switch like a year later, because then there's no point. Because like the community's like moved on for the yeah. most part. Like I don't want like a, a Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite to be like on Switch like in late 2018. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Frankly, I don't think we're gonna get either. It would be great at some point, but there are still a lot of cool games by, by and, arms and fighters. In the meantime, yeah. it's really good. Well, we still have Pocket Rumble and Pokin, so it in the in the end it should be okay. Um, Beaner Mexicano has a question uh -huh. uh, about a different genre on Switch. He says, I like shooters, but should I get a Switch instead of an Xbox One X? Now, obviously, there's a big price difference to take into account, but setting that aside, shooters on Switch. We have Splatoon 2 coming in July, and it's not a traditional shooter, uh, but it is a fantastic game. No Call of Duty announcement. So, as far as we know, Payday, if that still hits in 2017, is the only shooter on the schedule. I think if you like shooters, go get an Xbox. But... If they already have an Xbox uh, One and they want to expand the horizons, I highly recommend a Switch. Oh yeah, if you have yeah. an Xbox One, don't get a One X at all. Yeah, if it's if it's between getting an Xbox One X and a Switch, I think you got to go with the Switch. You're not going to be you like shooters now, but you will like more games after you get. A yeah, Switch. you're not going to be satiated <laughs> on the shooter genre. Do you think that that genre has ever expanded on Switch? Shooters like next year. You know, we know that more third parties are kind of like getting on board. Will that come in 2018? The think? only problem with that is that shooters are the ones that, for the most part, push graphical technology. Like, these games look really pretty. Um, what other shooters are doing are, like, Destiny, uh, constant multiplayer connection, uh, world building, things like that. And that's not what Switch is about, in my mind. Uh, to me, Switch is about local multiplayer. That's why mm. fighting games are so great on it. That's why, like, platformers and things like that are so great on it. But I think I think if you're really hardcore into shooters, right, and you love Call of Duty, you love Destiny, you love Battlefield, I think Switch is not the platform for you. I do think eventually we get some. I think if, you know, once Switch is in the 10, 15, 20 million range, yeah. I think some are going to come. But, yeah, just not now. Um, but when they do come, it's going to be less reversion, so just be aware of that. Possibly. For the most part, yeah. Uh, Rep Rochefort says about the Zelda DLC, um, I think Champions Battle of the second pack is going to be everything leading up to Calamity Ganon's takeover of Hyrule and Link going to sleep. Cass's story about how Rule falling could be called the Champions Ballad given the focus of the song. What if you go around and help the champions learn the Divine Beasts, then fight and presumably lose to the Blights at the end, then face out with Ganon, lose, go to sleep, and wake up in Breath of the Wild? I think it would be really interesting to have a Zelda game slash mini story that is a bad or ominous ending. But yeah, I'm calling it now. That's the new story. It would be awesome to play as the other champions or even Zelda, but I feel like that would be too much. What do you guys think? I don't think you get to play as anyone that isn't Link. No, but it's it's like I think it's interesting that they took like the prequel approach that it'd be before Clammy again, and then you go and try to fight Clammy again, and you just get like totally ousted, and then you're just like you're like all right, time to go to sleep. Cool concept. It'd be fun. I think to play it's interesting, and it makes sense like with how like Cost is always like talking about like pre. Clamming again, and he was the focal point of the trail, the reveal trailer. Yeah, I mean, it is called Champions Ballad, and they are putting those me about for a reason. They're Maybe gonna, it's a rhythm game. No, they're gonna. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> they're gonna factor in heavily one way or another. Playable, doubtful. 
But maybe it playable, yeah. maybe it is Link's interactions with them pre pre sleep. Yeah. That would be very cool, and that it's a way be. to utilize the same map. You know, then they wouldn't have to create like oh a separate area or something. Yeah. But it would just look rebuild different. some of the stuff. Yeah. yeah, like some of the stuff that's like broken down, just rebuild it. I think you may be onto something. That's a, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Um, Gamer for life WD has a question about DLC, but for Mario, I'm saying the biggest thing I'm curious about is whether the entirety of Mario Odyssey will release on October 27th, or if they will have future content updates, kind of like the expansions in Zelda Breath of the Wild. I don't like the way the question's phrased because I don't feel like we didn't get the entirety of Breath of the Wild. Right. Yeah. It definitely. They're going to give us a full package, but do you think there will be like an opportunity for an expansion pack or something since Nintendo now, ARMS, Splatoon, Zelda, like they're really the only, into the DLC thing. The only thing that keeps me away from that is like this Mario, seems like a different type of game. And I guess you could have said that about Zelda beforehand, um, but like Zelda really opened up into this like massive open world type game. And while Odyssey is like sort of on that track, I don't feel like it's as open and explorative as um, Breath of the Wild, I still feel like it's still like a mainstream Mario game. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they're going to give that the total package and overhaul and give that to you. Like, I don't think they're going to go DLC with every game. And I think they're going to, I think, in my opinion, that they're just going to give you everything in Mario right from the bat. Although it would be the perfect structure to have a kingdom be like a DLC. Like, a, a new kingdom yeah, would be like a great DLC pack. I just wonder if people would be like, okay, why are they doing DLC with everything and why aren't they just giving me the full mm -hmm. thing at the beginning? Yeah, true. Sure. I would love it. Because they're going to do DLC with content. ARMS, they're going to do DLC with Splatoon. In theory, we'll get DLC with Fire Emblem Warriors. Yeah, so... Yeah, may maybe Xenoblade and Mario don't see DLC, or maybe they do. We'll have to wait and see. Um, speaking of the future, gosh, this is a mouthful. Saya Heiseries Xander Zindershin says... Good. I what? I wonder what Nintendo has planned after E3. Super Smash Bros. Deluxe would be awesome. What else do you think they have planned beyond E3? And that's a good question. Like, what is the next big thing? Obviously, Pick we just me. got tons of announcements. But, like, even more than a specific game, when do you think we get a Splatoon Direct? Do you think it's a, a Pokémon Direct? Do you think it's a, no, a, a Mario dedicated Direct? I already did Pokémon Direct. True. Okay, so, so that's out of the picture. Yeah. So Mario Direct? Or uh, I mean, For, Well, I think we're getting a Virtual Console Direct at some point. Like now, that's where my my belief on Virtual Console has shifted to. So um, I feel like that's got to be after Mario, though. Yeah, I guess it. I don't know if you do it like you, you mentioned Splatoon. Like, do you do a direct for like a, a known quantity? Like that? they've like, covered so much of it in other directs, and and E three you know blew out Salmon Run and single player more. I feel like maybe maybe they do take a couple months off, and it's Mario, like a September Mario direct that also highlights maybe some new fall indies or something. Because mm -hmm. because that's thing that was. Missing was not a whole lot of indie announcements. Well, a lot of the ones from Nindies aren't out yet. Yeah, so maybe like yeah. cementing release dates, maybe. like a, a new Nindies. Yeah, they could have a second half Nindies direct, N and then N throw in like the a, Nindies Revenge. Yes, that could be it. And yeah. then throw in like a Splatoon two extra test fire or something at the end, like they did with Arms. I feel like we're not gonna get that. Game's a month away. Do you think? We got the, the global test punch less than a month away. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Good yeah. point. We'll see. Good question, though. Uh, LM900 says, I think the only thing missing from E3 is more ports in the Wii U. I wouldn't have minded a Super Mario 3D World plus Captain Toad bundle for the Switch or a Super Mario Maker for the Switch. Overall, though, they killed it. More Wii U ports. Were you surprised we didn't get one? We got one. Pokemon. But then before, that was before E3. We didn't get anything additional in E3. Yeah. No. I really think that Captain Toad would be the perfect game to pour over. It'd be easy to do. It's a small game. It wasn't even a full $60 game back then. So I put that in the eShop, and I feel like it would sell like hotcakes, except to Gabe, because Gabe has a fear. Nope. I'm breaking any Switch that I see that has But Captain the game Toad was perfect for Switch, and it was so much fun. Yeah, it is an ideal fit, and it would be, like you said, like a great... I do wonder if any Wii U games that aren't going to get the full like DX treatment maybe do get an eShop release like Captain Toad on eShop would be amazing I don't think it'll happen but it would be fantastic yeah you don't need to like make a DX for Captain Toad it still no. like looks fine I feel like not a lot of people played it so like it wouldn't be like oh like this again rightfully so well it was already $40 what? it was already yeah, so a budget like, price was, yeah. yeah yeah I e I don't know that I missed Wii U ports but I, I think I was expecting one more. Uh, Smash was the one I was expecting so yeah or Mario With Maker that, I don't know now like do they even do a port or do they just move on to new Smash Mo yeah. I, I want them to move on. So. Like they just do, uh, but then that means that Smash is years off. You don't think you could do it in 2018 holiday? No. Why not? I, I just don't think that's... It's been years since the last Smash. I, I don't think so. I well, feel no, like... no, it has been years. Yeah, that oh, okay. it has I like, been. I don't I think mean, it's been years. I don't think that that's... I think feel like that's a later cycle game that capitalizes on a bigger install base. Sure. A, a year and a half? You don't think that's a long enough... Mm. 
I feel like it needs to come out. But I yeah. feel like they got a lot to release between them. But who knows? Uh, Error 404 says, Why is nobody talking about the main series core RPG Pokemon they talked about? That, to me, is the bigger announcement because we've never had a core Pokemon game on a console. I get that the Switch is a hybrid, but seriously, this is basically the same thing as a console mainline Pokemon game. Well, right? the reason we don't talk about it is because <laughs> what is there to say? Well, and they got, it was so glossed over. Like, Metro, they had yeah. this, like, big, like, go cut to black and then a big logo, which was, like, overwhelming or underwhelming, whatever school of thought you're in. But then... The Pokemon answer was just him sitting at his desk like, oh, and hey, we're working on Pokemon for Switch. So I feel like that's why I just kind of got glossed over. It is a huge title and a huge game, and we'll for sure get way more information about it later. But I feel like that's why it's not like a headline for Right, well, and there's no, there's no like, like you said, no title reveal, no logo reveal, not yeah. even, you know, saying like, oh, this is this specific game in development. Just saying like, hey, we're working on something Pokemon for Switch. Hang tight. Yeah. So that'll come much farther. We'll talk about it more when there's more to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, B Ball Games says the fact that Animal Crossing did not appear at E3 crushes my soul. And we saw a lot of people saying, "Where was AC?" and not Assassin's Creed, but on, Animal Crossing on mobile. We didn't even see that though. Yeah, but Reddy talked about it. He said it's coming. Yeah, I, I, again, it's just like how much can you pack in? I was surprised though that Kirby and Yoshi took precedent to Animal Crossing. I mean, maybe it's just what teams are available, um, what teams aren't. Well, Obviously, that factors wanna, in. They want to save Animal Crossing for more mid-year holiday, and they're so then the, the beginning of the year they're doing the Yoshi and Kirby because I don't think it would be as... I don't know. Yeah, that that's, I think, totally viable. I mean, or they wait to see the mobile game and see what, mm -hmm. you know, that, how Yoshi that's received. Because pretty soon because they showed up, like, a 30-minute demo in, yeah. in the treehouse, and they didn't show anything about Kirby, so that's I, a little bit further off. I probably. feel like Yoshi's got to be their January or February game, in <laughs> theory. Sorry, I didn't come, B Bell, but I'm, I'm sure it will eventually. Uh, Pine Tub says, We need a new Donkey Kong Country. That might be coming too. It might be retro. It could be retro. I mean, hope it's not retro. Does it have its own government? Donkey Kong Country? <laughs> hey, we, how do we, how do we build, is there even any more land on the earth left to make another country? We'll find some. Uh, I hear they have some over there where Wonder Woman like an stays island at. jungle yeah. we could just make into it? Yeah. Okay. I feel like feel like that is, again, interesting that Yoshi and Kirby took precedent, but maybe they feel Donkey Kong is a bigger title, and so it. You know, comes later, or maybe Retro is just really working hard on it, or maybe it's the 3D one, like you always keep mentioning. I keep mentioning Pokemon 3D. Yeah, I, oh. I, I, I'm the one that says Donkey Kong. Oh, you Kong. say yeah. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong Tower Defense. That's what I want. <laughs> Donkey Kong Tower Defense. I definitely missed DK 83. I definitely did. Okay. Uh, Foreskin 1.0. Yikes. Uh, Pikmin 4 is in development, as confirmed by Miyamoto at Eurogamer. Yeah, and and we have a separate video about this, but. Uh, that was great to hear. Miyamoto said, like, oh, I can't really talk about it, but yeah, Pikmin 4 is almost done. It's coming, so I feel like that's got to be a next year title that they just Has, didn't have yeah. room for. Has to be. And especially because they like announcing games and releasing them shortly afterwards. Right, yeah. They really weren't big on on long term, and that's what makes me think, again, that Yoshi and Kirby are, are soon. Um, Evan Shea, or Evan Shea says, uh, do you think that we'll get Metroid Prime Trilogy on Switch to prepare for Metroid Prime 4? Mm. I hope so, but no. You don't think that's something they could do a deluxe of? Like a, a remaster? Maybe that's what Rachel's working on. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it would be really epic, but at the same time, I feel like it would take away because Metroid hasn't seen an appearance in console, so I feel like they did... If you give th th yourself th three Metroid games, are you going to be primed out? <laughs> yeah, well, well, they did they, they did the trilogy pack. Mm -hmm. so on I, Wii. Yeah, so I feel like that... I don't know that we need that redone. Well, uh, uh, virtual console. Let us play it. Or can you just be happy with Samus Returns until then? I'm happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm so over. pumped for Samus Returns. That game yeah. looks absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, Iwano says, I have to say I'm starting to get worried about Mario Odyssey. The levels seem too empty and the game looks too easy. I want this game to have dense worlds and I want those worlds to be hard. Aren't the Moon Shards supposed to be the equivalent to stars in Mario 64? So why are they giving you for doing nothing? Seriously, you can get a Moon Shard from a question block? That's just lazy. The worlds lack memorable music. There's nothing to do in them that's fun. The only world I like is the wooded forest. The metro city looks so bland and boring. The sand level looks so empty. When I played Mario 64, every level had its own personality and own fun adventures, like finding the Boo Mansion, climbing into a volcano. There's none of that in Mario Odyssey, and I feel like it won't be as great as people are making it out to that's be. That's not true. There's a lot of that. Well, I, I want to go back to what I mentioned in a video yesterday, that I'm starting to look at each world as more of a hub world, and you have, you know, a lot of fast travel options to get to different places and different courses within the, the that hub world. 
Um, and so, yeah, it's not like everything's really centrally focused and you like go into this picture or uh, the painted M and then you're like right in the smack dab in the middle of your objective. You kind of have to explore around and yeah, you can find moon shards all around. And I was kind of down on that, at that, on that uh, initially, but I'm more taking it as those are the, the hub worlds that then you have to go and branch off and explore your way to your main objective. And then that area, the objective, like in the Sandy Kingdom, there's like an oasis that's more dense. There's a uh, ice cave that's more dense. There's the inverted pyramid that's more dense. There's the town that's more dense. So like mm -hmm. there are like areas within the big expansive maps that are more dense and more uh, have more objectives and moon shards in them. The other thing is uh, in Mario 64 and in Sunshine, like the first few stars are always really easy. Like they're yeah. not like difficult to get. And mm. I feel like we're seeing the beginning of Mario Odyssey. We're not seeing like deep, like I think it does get more difficult. Like. We just gotta give it time. We gotta see more, and, and I think they're trying to just show you cool stuff, but not like the coolest stuff, because I don't want to spoil that type of thing. And I definitely wish there was a, more of a distinction between the objective-based moons and just sort of the, the stumble-upon moons, but we don't know how many there are. We don't know if there's 200 moons in the game. We don't know how many are required for you know unlocking new levels. We don't know any of that stuff, so I feel like until that is unveiled, it's hard to pass judgment, because if there's 200 moons and you need a bunch of them, then yeah, a few easy ones here or there don't matter, and, and completing the objectives is where you'll spend most of your time. I also think that they're kind of almost like a, not a storyline in terms of like dialogue storyline, but like um, a linear fashion to the objectives. Like I'm starting to think like that's how you get to the night cycle. It's not a cycle, it's like once you complete like five objectives in New Donk, then it turns to night, and then mm. you can do those objectives. Could so like, be. You, you need to... The, the distinction in my head at least is like in order to like get to certain places or have like the night thing happen or different bosses like you have to do the the, the linear objective based ones yeah and the other thing to remember i think is rose colored glasses right mario 64 levels were awesome but they were very very small themselves and they were reused for different purposes so there's nothing to say that oh you can't reuse certain areas like in a nighttime with a different scenario right. or something like that and in a way having all these different areas with like an objective over here an objective over here it just expands the the amount of like sandbox you have to play with. There's a lot right. more space to, to do things with instead of like, you know, experiencing the same area over and over again with different and objectives. I'm not worried about Mario Odyssey at all. I have faith in them. Yeah, the last thing I was gonna say is like, I don't think they would have built such a new foundation with Mar all of Mario's new moves, um, all the capture abilities that you're gonna be able to use there, and then just like throw it out the window for like empty yeah. spaces. No. Uh, Julio Mario, one of our favorite Marios, uh, will Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle have a multiplayer mode? Not as far as we know. That would be cool, though. Like, yeah. if you could build a squad and then, like, yeah. compete against each other, that would be really exciting. Yeah, but no, I, I yeah, don't, I don't think so. It would be too hard either, but, yeah. It would be awesome. They're, they're supposedly co-op. They weren't really talking much about it. Yeah, yeah. you could just do, like, a local co-op, like, just, like, one, like, even if it was, like, a basic grid-based, like, thing. Like, like, didn't have, like, Competitive, much, you mean? Yeah, like, you had, like, yeah. two squads of three, and you're just duking it out. Yeah, um... And this this is Rabbids as well. Any idea if this game is going to be harder and more challenging than the initial videos, or will it be aimed at kids? I think I think it will be harder. Like, and, and the thing about E3, right, is like they're not trying to like show you like unless you're like you know from software. Like, they're not trying to show you things that are just going to make you fail over and over. Because like a lot of people wait in very long lines to play mm -hmm. these games. Like, they make sure that the demos are easy, beatable, yeah. totally. Yeah. So uh, and they show you like early early chunks of the game. Like, what game are you dying in in the first ten minutes? Again, unless you're from software. Right. Like I, I, th this difficulty thing. Like I think it's almost like a non-factor. And and yeah, and even stuff like the healing after battles. Like I think they added yeah. in and. They talked about how like the, the boss battle is eventually gonna be like thirty plus minutes where you have to like multi tiered. Yeah, yeah. And you have to like they said like where you can play it for a short amount of times, but you're gonna have to pause and come back because the battles get so long. Yeah, and that question by the way is from uh, Dan Fitzy eighteen. Um, next up, uh, Carlos Rodriguez kind of just commenting on the first year of Switch. He says we've got Legend of Zelda, uh, big R like a big open world RPG, online shooter in Splatoon, innovative fighting in Arms, best Mario Kart ever made. Pokin, Mario 3D Sandbox game, Yoshi game, Kirby game, Xenoblade 2, Mario Rabbids turn-based strategy, and then eventually Metroid Prime 4 Pokemon Core in the future. Uh, is this the best console lineup ever in one year? What's left? And after that, does it get slim picking? Did Nintendo release things too fast? Well, the problem with this is like, you okay, whatever you want to do the first calendar year. I don't think Yoshi and Kirby is out in the first year. I think I do. Both? Yeah, I think, you think before Kirby March. I think we get one in January, one in March. I don't think so. I mean, you could be right, um, but regardless, um, we, we can't call, we can't count Metroid Prime Four as like the first year. Like, no, they're saying that would just be off on the horizon. Yeah, I don't know. But really they're strong like, lineup. Really strong lineup. Yeah, and all from like except for Rabbids, it's all from Nintendo. Like it's all first party stuff. I'd have to go back and look to to be sure, but I feel like yeah, that's got to be one of if not the strongest first year lineups ever. 
incredible genre variety, incredible quality. You know, you have to see with uh, Xenoblade, Mario, Rabbids, uh, but we expect them to turn out really well. We pretty much know Splatoon 2 is going to be excellent. We already know Zelda, Mario Kart, ARMS are, are really fun and, and in, in most cases, phenomenal. Um, so I think it's going to be go down as one of the best first years. Slim Pickings in the future, that's interesting. Like, what, no. what else do they have? But Smash. Yeah. Animal Crossing. Pikmin. Metroid. Uh, what else? Golden Sun, hopefully. Maybe. Eternal like, Darkness, hopefully. Still a lot like, to yeah. go off of. Yeah, they can, they can do things. Another Mario Maker. Like. Well, and more new IP. We've seen with ARMS and Splatoon how well that's worked for them. I feel like they will continue to innovate. I, I still think Retro's working on new IP, so. Donkey Kong. Yeah, there's there's plenty to do. And even more Mario titles. I mean... Kid Icarus. Yeah, there, there's so much... Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think they went too fast. Diddy I think Kong they racing. went. I think they went just the right speed to guarantee that the Switch would build an install base that would support Zombie more of their U2, games. Bayonetta three and more of more third party titles. <laughs> I'm gonna stop now. Uh, CTC four three F says Virtual Console is the one that I miss the most from E3. It would be a great way to fill genre gaps easily, and it'd be great to get mobile SNES and N64 games on something bigger than a 3DS screen. I think Nintendo's dilemma is would a game like Mario Sunshine cannibalize sales of Odyssey? If it was there for 10 or $20 and offers a similar playstyle and game length. Also, it seems Nintendo is going all in on Switch enabling local multiplayer, and that becomes difficult to do with the Joy-Con when you go to N64 and above. I still hope it comes sooner rather than later. It's having Mobile Eternal Darkness or Super Mario RPG would I, be great. I think this is a really interesting com comment and sort of like what I've been touching on a little bit. And, and it kind of makes sense in a way. Like we've been talking about how strong their, their lineup is, and they've right. introduced new IP and things like that in their first year. So maybe they don't want to unleash all of their great games from the past yeah. at the same exact time. Maybe they want to give all these new... Because like Mario Odyssey is kind of a new version of Mario. They want to give all that breathing room and let that sell well and people get excited for it and then unleash in like the lull season their virtual console and be like, okay, we kind of are running out of steam for all of our... We just put out a ton of new stuff after Kirby and, and Yoshi and you got Metro Prime in the future and Pikmin and Animal Crossing. So then that's in, in that, that gap. Then they say, here's Virtual Console, so replay all your favorites. Yeah, that or they, like you you kind of thought, maybe they save Kirby and Yoshi for a little later and Virtual Console's like right after holidays. Like, hey, you just got a Switch. Yeah, you got man. some of these awesome games. Now use your gift cards on Virtual Console. Yeah, that could be it. But yeah, I definitely see a, an issue where you have similar type games being released and you don't want to cannibalize. Does Virtual Console sell anywhere near as many as actual Mario Odyssey? No, but yeah, from a strategy standpoint, maybe they do save for a lull season or for we already have a bigger install base and we've already released many of our main lines, so now let's introduce the past. Mm -hmm. I think that I think it's a good point. Um, let's see, we've got a comment now coming in about Arms uh, from Nerdy Smash Boy saying, "Wait, where's Lanky Kong? I want Lanky Kong in Arms." <laughs> No, you, get, you, you get he Max was, instead. He, he was the the initial arm spider. With yes. His, his long punches, extendable arm punches. Yeah, he was awesome. He'd fit right in. I love that lineup. I hope that, you know, they introduced uh, Cranky into Tropical Freeze, and and they had Dixie, obviously, and Diddy and Donkey. I hope they bring back some of the others. In the Tower Defense game coming out. Yeah. Um, Elijah Picklefish. <sighs> I guess I need a longer nap. The final kingdom in Mario Odyssey should be the Mushroom Kingdom. That would be awesome. We'd have Toads. Yeah, I, 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 all the classic enemies, and imagine Peach's castle in beautiful what's HD. A, what's a it's a cashew <laughs> that you. Car you ever seen cashew carving? So you take a fine tooth comb mm -hmm. and you carve magical mysticism inside. Oh, of nuts. What, what's a castle doing in the mushroom kingdom? I, I'm so excited. Uh, Elijah says, but yeah, I think that would be epic if Mushroom Kingdom was a level. I don't know. I feel like there's, I feel like Mushroom Kingdom is like too old school and not like. As it doesn't feel like the capturing as much. I'm gonna say it now. I think it's in it. I think Mushroom Kingdom will 100. percent But be like, Odyssey. what does that mean, Mushroom Kingdom? Because I guess the, the Mushroom Kingdom is like ever well, expanding. Yeah, they but always like, make new additions to the Mushroom Kingdom. Well, no, Kingdom. but you you know they have kingdoms. I think one of them is called Mushroom Kingdom. That's what I was gonna say. I wonder if the reason that they're calling things kingdoms is so that's a nice way to slide in yeah. Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. Like you go back to that kingdom. That's where Bowser's like taking over or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe. The Odyssey's well, he's last stop. Man, he's flying all over the kingdoms. He doesn't need Mushroom Kingdom anymore. Mushroom Kingdom Peach. will be in the game. He's got Peach. I feel it. Who knows? And you get to go replay Mario 64. All right. Nope, that is not <laughs> you, you take a nap. <laughs> Max C25 has one more Mario Odyssey question for us or comment. It would be awesome if in the final Bowser battle, Mario and Bowser throw their hats at each other at the same time and take over each other. So you turn into Bowser and have to take on Mario. That would That'd be, be weird. great. But no, do we even amazing. know if Bowser has a capturing hat? We don't know that. Yeah, we don't. He has a hat. That'd be very weird, though. It'd be a weird turn of events. You're all for playing as Bowser, though, so I, you want Yeah, I, I really think you're going to capture Bowser. I know, we know that you think that's I think it. it's good. Cappy says, you better be playing as me. 
Multiplayer, have that, to. That is good. And, yeah. you know, we had some people, like, asking about multiplayer. It's officially been confirmed now. Um, it's co-op with Cappy. Not exactly sure the specifics of how, if you're Mario, you throw Cappy, if someone's playing as Cappy. They it, said that they have solutions for that. They just yeah. weren't showing them. But Cappy has mine of his own. Um, and it seems a little more advanced than, like, the Mario Galaxy mode. Yeah. yeah. But not as full as, like, a true co-op. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's yeah. for the next game. Odyssey 2. That's a weird thing to think about. Luigi's Odyssey. I feel like Luigi... I think they confirmed War that Luigi is in the game. Super Wario Odyssey. They, they all but confirmed he's in the game. Yeah, he's Super in the Wario, game. You just can't use him. Super Wario Odyssey. Super Waluigi Crime Scene Investigation yep, Station time, Casino man. Gambling WarioWare. Uh, game, game Isis, Game Assist, Game Assist Heartworks. It's getting the Kingdom Hearts 3 now in development treatment. Those Metroid fans have no idea that they'll be waiting for a few years for Metroid Prime 4. I'm with you. <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> Not I think a few years. I just don't think it comes next year. I think it's next year. Jake? I'm the wait and see guy. All right, cool. <laughs> I don't feel like there, there's no way to do a Kingdom Hearts 3. That's insane. No, no, not that much, but I don't think the game comes until 2019, so. Let's see. Um, let's ne see. Next E3 is, is just going to be the entire booth is going to be Metro Prime 4, like they did with Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> like Planet, uh, like. Uh, but no other games. Either a new planet or, or what's the main Mar Metro Planet? Help me out here. You're going to need to edit this. And it's, it's Z Zebus? Zebus? No, Zebus? Look it up. How do you pronounce it? Who the fuck cares? Why would you start a sentence that you don't know the end of it? Fuck, Gabe, Gabe, Gabe says he's a Metroid fan. I am, but I don't remember these things. I can't pronounce the regular words. Zebes. Zebore. Is that... Is there I'm, concerned you're, you know, you, I'm concerned that you're not uh, recording audio. Zebes. Oh, I am. Okay. How long have we been? 28. All right. Also, I hope you saved all... You didn't just open all those comments and, and tabs and then just close them all. I there. did. But they're all still on Discord. Are you sure? Yes. All right. You're the ones that you got? Yes. If not, we can just do it without comments on the screen, which is fine. Yeah. If you need, if people can listen. Yeah, I don't think we need see. comments on the screen for this one. This is a special edition. This isn't Comic Force. Okay. All right. Zebes. Okay. Zebes. Yeah, they'll just have the whole booth. They'll have the whole booth decked out like Planet Zebes. That would be amazing. You're saying this is positive. I was mentioning like it's a negative, like we only oh. have one game. <laughs> oh man, if it's Metro Prime Four though, that would be that would be pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. Um, Vivsin says, I'm pretty sure they're being careful with what they announce and release for the Switch because of the DS. I think they want to squeeze one more year out of the DS, and that's why we're not going to see anything from Pokemon Switch for a while. I was hoping they chose Virtual Console, maybe a firmware update for some of the web stuff. Hashtag delete DS. Well, that ain't happening. Reggie said they're I supporting wish. it beyond 2018. Reggie can lie. Reggie lies. He, pr he got, got you with Metroid. He did get me. He came through. He did come through. After like two years. I don't... I'm having less issue with DS because the games that are coming out on DS are games that, at least thus far, Hey Pikmin, uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Samus Returns, those are not games that would be on Switch. And yes, Samus it'd be great if they, Switch. they're on I Switch. I wish Samus was on Switch but, for $40. I wish. But they're not going to do that. I don't, Why not? What I, stops they them? they have the 3DS. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, but I don't think that they're ready to introduce a budget line for Switch. I feel like if it comes on Switch, it's got to be 60 Destroy DS. I'm with it. No. I like DS. Well, they just unlo you, unleash the 2DS. we got to get you a DS. Done. we gotta get you, we got to get you both. Three, three DSs. We or want two DS. Okay. Well. Done. It's upstairs. Um, Sonic Boom 1024 says, Somewhere you can hear Luigi banging his head against the wall that he's not the co-op partner in Odyssey. Well, no, he's off in a mansion somewhere. Do you think? Yeah. No, that's another game. That they, Luigi's Mansion? Like, yeah. That they're, not, they're not slimming down. Maybe maybe you'll go to Luigi's Mansion. Maybe in the Mushroom Kingdom Kingdom. No, why do we want all the games in one game? We want separate games. Mario Odyssey. No, we want separate games. Yeah, uh, that too. Can you can have everything. No, but you're Mario visiting. It's not. It's not gonna have the gameplay of Luigi's Mansion. Yes. It's just visiting the visuals. Or Ghost Kingdom. Okay. I like this. Uh, yeah, Booze Kingdom. Sorry for derailing you. Go back to your comments. Booze Sorry. Kingdom. Uh, Booze Kingdom. Booze Kingdom. <laughs> Booze Kingdom. That's it's a, Booze that, Kingdom. That's a, that's a, oh, I thought you were going more. Of, okay, never mind. Next comment. No, <laughs> not not like Drinking Kingdom. Yeah, okay. No, <laughs> like the ghost. The guy that goes. Meh. Okay, never again. King Booze Kingdom. Okay, please move on. We, Ghost we House saved, Kingdom. We saved the, 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 the longest Sati comment for last. Yeah, this is a good one to wrap up because it kind of summarizes E3. Uh, Makaseta Makasite 30. I gotta say, okay. Make Seat 3-0. Maka, it's Makasete. Makasete. Makasins. Makasin 3. Oh, All right, my. I gotta say. The lineup was beyond my expectations. I love the unique art style for the Yoshi game. The Kirby game looks like innovative 2D platformer fun. And I agree with Zach when he said he loved that they were bringing so much multiplayer to Switch. Can I stop you? I can really start to imagine house parties happening, like the Switch promo videos, where a lot of peeps pull out their Switches and more join as they arrive. And what this is getting me just chills. In one room, people are having a Splatoon and Mario Kart tournament. In another room, a group of people get together and play Kirby. Heck, I can't even imagine random strangers getting together on a train and noticing they have the same multiplayer game. So why not? 
and Metroid Prime 4. Finally, they didn't need to show anything else from the game. The name was good enough at this point. Love your reaction, guys. I could feel the excitement all the way in Japan. Boom. I have an issue with the word innovative being thrown around so much when it comes to Nintendo stuff. That's my only issue. That Kirby game, to me, doesn't look innovative. Okay, but in general, their lineup and the way that they're evolving their properties is innovative. Okay. Zelda. Okay. Mario. Okay. Until you rabbits plus every Mario. Time, I, until, I, they, until they, they reveal the secret of the Kirby game, every time you swallow an enemy and press down to, to transform him, it spits out a little amiibo from the Switch. It's the Amiibo physical. creator game? Yes. Ooh, like the um, <laughs> the Game Boy printer? Now they're going to have a, yeah, it's like <laughs> uh, a Amiibo printer? Like a Polaroid. 3D Amiibo printer. Switch Polaroid. Amiibo card printer. Kirby Pro Polaroid. Amiibo card reader. No one's printing anything. Come on. <laughs> card reader. They can read cards. Print sure. on Gabe. I'm going to tattoo you with Amiibos. Okay. I love this comment. I'm glad that it resonated all around the world. I think Nintendo did win E3 all around the world. They came in with a crushing lineup, and they kicked butt. Thank you, guys and girls, for all your support throughout E3. We loved your questions. We are not done with our E3 videos. There is still more coverage to be made. There is still more videos to be talked. There is still more Talked, fun, watched. Still, still more fun to be had, and we'll be bringing that your way ASAP. In the meantime, I'm going to go beat these guys in arms. You guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. For myself, Jake, and Gabe, Switch Force.